Welcome back to Out of Townsend. My name is Kevin, and this is a very special episode of Out of Townsend because it's the fifth day of my vlogging challenge, and rather than doing a straight up normal vlog, I've decided to do more of a vlog tutorial. I want to show you five quick workflow tips or hacks that I've learned working with Final Cut Pro. So let's get into it. Tip number one is how to create an adjustment layer. If you're like me, then you watch a bunch of YouTube tutorials now, and you see people working in Premiere using adjustment layers. You even may have saw a video with Jesse Driftwood where he referred to working with adjustment layers, but neither of them show you how to actually get an adjustment layer in Final Cut Pro. So my first tip is to show you how to make your own. In order to do that, we are going to use motion. So this tip does require that you have motion. If you have motion, you're going to do a file, new project from browser, then you're going to go ahead and select the Final Cut title. But before you click on Final Cut title, you want to make sure that the presets match your existing workflow. I am setting mine to 4K Digital Cinema at 24 frames a second with a 10 second duration. Okay. Now, once I open that file up, you are going to get an empty title sequence that has a spot in it for text. All we need to do is delete that text layer from this title sequence. You're gonna click on the text layer, you're going to click delete, and then you're going to go ahead and do a save as. Now, my suggestion is that you do two of these. One of them you should save as base correction, and then you should immediately do a second save as and save it as color grade dash look. Now, that gives you two named adjustment layers that you can plug on to any video, but it contains zero information, so the corrections that you can add to them are limitless. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to name mine. I'm gonna name mine something simple like demo correction. You're also going to notice that there's a category that you can assign things to. I went to category here, I created, create, click new, I made my own called Out of Townsend, and now when I save it to Out of Townsend, it will import into Final Cut Pro automatically. We are back in Final Cut Pro. You can see here that the blank titles that I've made have shown up. The next tip, tip number two, is I wanna show you how to be able to make your own custom titles. If you find yourself using the same font, same size, same alignment over and over and over again, and have to constantly adjust the custom setting, inside of Final Cut Pro, well, there's an easier way to do that. You can make your own title with all of those decisions made for you and save yourself a few mouse clicks. And to do this, we are going to just go up to the titles menu. We are going to control click on the custom titles in the menu. We're gonna select from the pop-up, open in motion, open a copy in motion. Now, in the top left corner of this page, you're going to see a little tab that says Inspector, and we wanna go ahead and click on Inspector, and that will pull up the details we need to adjust here. So click on Inspector, and then go ahead and set your font that you use, set the alignment, the size, all of the stuff that matters to you, and make all those changes, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a save as home planet, centered and make sure that it's in the out of Townsend category and I'm gonna hit publish so if you now look here in this out of Townsend folder that I have in Final Cut you can see all of the sample correction layers that I've made as well as a couple of different titles that I've made for myself okay so that's it for the two tips that require motion I want to show you how I set up my hotkeys in Final Cut so tip number three is custom hotkeys that I find super useful in order to set these up you're gonna go up to the Final Cut menu in the top left hand corner you're gonna go down to command and across to customize. Now when the menu pops up, you're going to be here inside of the default setup. What I want you to do is come into this menu, scroll up to duplicate, and make yourself a new one. I'm calling it Vlogtorial Hotkeys and saying okay. Now here are the changes that I want to make. The first is around the B key. Right now, by default, in Final Cut, the B key does the blade tool. Okay, what I want is to move the blade tool down to the command modifier, and I want to move the blade with no modifier up here. So now anytime I hit the B key, it's just gonna go ahead and cut for me. Next key that I want to change is I want this left bracket. What I want to do is I want to move the trim start up to that top 
no modifier selection. That's what I want that key to be, is anytime I'm pushing that key, it's going to trim everything to the left of that bracket in video clips. I'm gonna do the same thing for the right bracket, and I wanna make that no modifier, I wanna turn that into trim end. That allows me to just push those keys in order to go ahead and cut everything to the left or right of that point in the timeline. Next, I want to do the plus and minus in. and uh, what I want this to be is I want to switch zoom out to be unmodified there and what I want to do is change the command modifier to be decrease clip height on the minus. Now let's go over to the plus or the equal sign. I want this to be zoom in when unmodified and I want it to increase the clip height when it's modified with the command key. That allows me to zoom in and zoom out of my timeline without having to hit modifier keys all of the time makes things way faster for me. The final thing that I want to do that I use a whole lot is I want to use the tilde key and I want to change the way that that works and one of the things that I would like to do is I want to set it to do color corrections because I end up making a ton of color corrections and I want to be able to add things very quickly and very easily. So in order to make this happen you're going to click on the tilde key in the in the menu up here um, yeah in this panel up here on the left you're going to click on the tilde key you're going to come down here to the command groups you're going to click on effects and what you end up getting is this menu of effects. So what I want it to be able to do is with no modifier I'm going to add a color board effect with a shift modifier, it's going to add a color curve, and then with an option modifier, it's going to add color wheels effect. So there are the things that I want that I'm going to be doing fairly regularly. I can do a control with the control modifier, add a shape mask. So what I've just done is I made that one tilde key mode where my left hand sits often, be able to add a whole bunch of effects rather quickly and easily to my adjustment layers when it's time to work with them. In order for me to show you tip number four, we have to have some video to work with and we have to have made some adjustments to it because I want to show you how to save some of the presets that you use over and over again inside of Final Cut so you can recall them and use them again. Let's first show you how to be able to use the few things that we've added to our Final Cut. So we're going to come up here to the titles menu. We're going to select the out of Townsend folder in my case or whatever you've named it we're gonna drag a base correction layer down here to our clip I'm sorry the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and drag a color grade dash look layer down here we're gonna work into the base correction layer and I'm just gonna hit the tilde key which is gonna add me a color board that I can use to work with so in this base correction layer I now have a color board that I can use to adjust or adjust exposure saturation and color this, this does not need a whole lot, but let's go ahead and change the workspace over to our color and effects workspace so that we can see all of our scopes. Um, other than that, I think things are looking pretty good, so I don't need too much in terms of base layer correction. Next, we're gonna click on the color grade dash look, and if you remember, we programmed tilde to, go, to add us a couple other things. If I hit shift and the tilde key, it's gonna give me my color curves, and if I go in here and I hit option and tilde, it's gonna give me my color wheels. So now I wanna add my color grade, my look and feel, and the very first thing that I'm going to do is add a little bit more saturation and a little bit more contrast, because I'm shooting in cine style. So I'm gonna add some saturation here. You can see I can go excessive and it goes way up. I just wanna boost it ever so slightly. I'm gonna compress the darks just a little bit by sliding that midpoint down. And then I'm gonna pull all of the shadows over into something that is a little bit into that tealy blue scale. In the midtones, I'm gonna do similar. I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of juice there by increasing the saturation. I'm gonna compress the mid range. Uh, I'm going to compress the values just a little bit by dragging this down and in this case I'm going to push into this sort of pale orangey area here to be able to get a little bit more warmth into my midtones. So I'm going to use this little arrow right here in the color palette. I'm going to click on my color curves and I'm going to go ahead and reduce the amount of overall black in this and I'm going to reduce the presence of pure white. That's what I'm going with. Now if I click on the V key you can see the before and the after. It's a fairly subtle grade that I'm doing here. Now that I've done these uh, two changes here, I want to save them. So I can come in here and I can name this um, demo color grade 
and I can select out of towns and category I can save it and now you can see it popped right up in here and I have it so that when I want to use it again it is right there okay um, so that is tip number three that's how to go about making your own color grade preset in Final Cut so you can recall it anytime you want. So you can see that I've got some markers already on my clips. If I play this clip through, it's a little bit long. Um, and what I really want is for it to grab and start right where the, um, right where the knife is about to cross the bread. So we go there and you can see it's gonna come in right there. So I'm gonna put my mouse right there. I'm gonna hit the left bracket and you can see what happened is that it, it edited the color grade line up top. I'm going to undo that because I didn't want to do that. You need to make sure the clip that you want to edit is selected. When you set a hotkey for trimming it in Final Cut, it always trims the top most visible layer. So I could turn my, my grade off or I can just make sure that my clip is selected. And now I'm going to hit that left bracket and you can see it end trims it right there. This is my out point. I'm going to hit the right bracket and that's going to trim that there. And then I have a rack focus here that, that happens and I sort of put a marker here. I guess I'm gonna hit the left bracket there. It's gonna trim me right there. And then my out point is going to be right here, right bracket and done. The hotkeys make things so much faster. For the fifth and final tip, I'm gonna show you just a quick down and dirty way to be able to get handwritten animated text into Final Cut. And I do it using my iPad Pro and Procreate. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a brand new uh, document. I'm going to make sure that the background is black and I'm going to go ahead and just write the word test and circle it. But before I do, I'm going to start a screen recording on my iPad. Um, and then what I will do is export that screen recording into Final Cut Pro. So start a screen recording, open up Procreate, select a white pen that I want to use, write the word test, circle it, stop the screen recording, and then go ahead and export that and pull it into Final Cut Pro. Okay, you can see I've already imported this screen recording in here. I'm just gonna scrub through the timeline here so you can see what it looks like. Um, what I need to do is eliminate all of the menu items and all of the unnecessary parts of this image. Okay, before I crop the image down to its final size, I want to change the composting layer here. I wanna be able to see what it looks like with the image coming through the bottom, so I'm gonna change it to lighten. Now I'm gonna adjust the scale down to 69%. And here when I scrub through, you can see what it looks like and how it aligns perfectly. I'm gonna put it back to normal mode here so I can see what I'm doing while I'm cropping the image. I'm gonna quickly eliminate all of the unnecessary parts of this image and use the crop tool to do that. So I'm gonna scrub through to the widest point of this image. I'm gonna pull the right side in. I'm then gonna pull down on the top. I'm going to crop in from the bottom and now I have eliminated all those weird little menus and stuff that show up all on the sides. If I come back over here to my composting layer, turn it back to lighten and now all I get is my lettering coming through. The second clip where I am going to reverse the first clip, I've already trimmed that one and cropped that one up for us here. And the idea here is to make it look like the spray is eliminating it. So I have reversed it. I've sped it up a little bit. I am gonna change its mode back to lighten. And then I've also put a couple keyframes on there to reduce the opacity at the end of that spray. So uh, let's take a look at what the final thing looks like. Okay, third take is a charm. That is it for this video. I don't normally do tutorials, but if you thought this was helpful or useful, I would love to know about it in the comments or by giving me a thumbs up. These five quick tips are things that I learned over the last 25 or so vlog episodes that I've done. If you have some for me, I would love to hear them as well. When I was first starting out, editing was my big bottleneck. I understood what to do and how to do it, but it definitely took a lot more time, and I spent a lot of time dragging my mouse all over the Final Cut interface. By adding hotkeys and creating sort of shortcuts for things that I find myself using regularly, I have expedited my workflow tremendously. And now I feel very comfortable editing with two hands in Final Cut at all times. One hand on the mouse, one hand on the keyboard, and I have very little wasted movement any longer. I think this is going to be the last video of 2019. We will be back in 
early January of 2020 with brand new episodes for season two. We will have content from New York, Barcelona, Paris, and probably some stuff on my brand new studio at Studios Inc. I can't wait to talk to you again next year. I hope you will continue to tune in. Until next time, I'm out.